In this video, I'm going to give you a very quick demonstration about how you can write some code to do Newton's method for you. All right? So you might remember in when we were doing Newton's method in the previous video, it was a pretty iterative process, right? We were pretty much doing the same thing over and over again. And while that can be a little bit tedious for us to do, like by hand, it means that it's probably very nice for us to program into a computer, right? So that's what we're going to be doing in this video. So we're gonna, I'm just going to show you a very basic sense of how you could potentially code Newton's method into a computer. I'm using Desmos here just to, because it's a nice tool. Uh, it works very, very nicely for basic math. Uh, but you could easily do this and extrapolate this to other languages that you might know, so like Python, or if you're an engineer, you could use MATLAB to do this. Right? Um, so let's go ahead and do this now. So once again, we want to start by picking our x of 0, our initial value. Uh, and we're going to we remember we chose that to be 1. So let's start, let's start there. Um, then we want x sub 1, our first iteration. Um, that's going to be x sub 0 minus f of x sub 0 over f prime of x sub 0. And that's our first output right, for x sub 1. Um, we, got, we got 1 fifth, and that's also 1 fifth that we converted into a fraction. Okay, fantastic. Now for our second iteration, I don't even need to rewrite this again. I can just copy this, this code put it down here and just change the subscripts. So we have x sub 2, x sub 1, yada, yada, yada. Okay, and that's our second approximation. It's about 0.289. It's about what we got as well when we did this by hand. Okay, great. Now we can do our third iteration. 2, 2, 2. And now you remember we got, this is the value that we got when we did it. 0.30045, um, it's approximately what we got, right? And we did that in about a minute, right? What took us about six or seven minutes to do in the, in the previous video by hand using the calculator, we've now done this in about, uh, in about a minute. And that's pretty cool, right? Because now this you know, we're putting most of the burden of the work on the computer as opposed to you know, our, ourselves, right? And that's really cool, that's really cool. Awesome. So now we can also go ahead and do the same thing where we check how accurate this estimate is. So we can say, what's f of x3? Well, that's about, so that comes out to negative uh, 0. 0.00064, which as you talked about is already super small. This is on the order of one in 10,000, right? It's a really, really small number. So that tells us that this is a pretty good approximation. Like x3 is a pretty good approximation for what our uh, zero would be. However, we could make that better, right? So since we have it on here, well, since we're doing it on, on a computer, we could potentially make that approximation better, right? How we could how could we do that? Well, we could maybe add another iteration, right? So if we delete this, we could add another iteration. So we could make x4 equals x3, uh, we plug in x3s there, right? So with one more iteration, we could also improve the accuracy of our x, of our zero and if you find that f of x4 is super duper small now, right? Negative four times 10 to the negative eight. That's a number that's on the order of like, you know, one in 10, or one in 10, or one in 100 million, right? One in 10, one in about 100 million, which is really, really small. So that tells us that x4 is now a super duper good estimate for the zero. How can we make this even more accurate? Well, we could come back up here and say, all right, that zero looks pretty far from one, right? So what if we improve the starting value to be a little bit closer to that zero? What if we made it like, say, I don't know, like 0 0.5? Now that's even more accurate, right? This is now on the order, so this is now on the order of 10 to the minus 14, which is like one in billions, right? That's super duper small. So now we've made this super good estimation and with minimal handiwork, right? So that's kind of the power of how Newton's method, that's kind of one of the biggest um, benefits of Newton's method, right? It's very easy to code into a computer, which means you can do a lot more and get, a, get super accurate estimates, right? Um, if you, we could do even more iterations, choose starting points even closer, we eventually we would get an error so small, it's, not, it's beyond the resolution of Desmos, right? Um, and so that's, basic, that's basically how Newton's method is. And once again, this coding scale is very easy to extrapolate, right? Like what I've written here is, this is very, very basic code. Like if you wanted to, you could do this using something called recursion, which is a little bit more complicated to set up, but it's a lot more powerful. Uh, if you're using a different coding language, you could do that. 
Or you could just, you know, you could copy this over onto a different um, platform. This kind of setup onto a different platform, it will also work super well, right? Um, I'll share this graph with you guys if you want to check this out later. But yeah, that's basically it for this video. I hope you found this helpful and informative. If you found this video helpful, please do like, share, subscribe, leave a comment, and check out some other videos. See you next time!